A few years ago, one of the major discoveries coming from the gravitational wave detectors was the detection of a neutron star collision. Two neutron stars on a collision course in a really, really far away galaxy produced very intriguing observations that the scientists studied for several months afterwards, in the process confirming something the scientists have been expecting for a very long time. These types of collisions seem to be responsible for the production of a lot of heavier elements that we generally take for granted here on planet Earth. For example, things like gold and platinum and a lot of other heavier elements. So all of this was actually a result of a collision between two neutron stars in the Milky Way galaxy, very likely in the vicinity of planet Earth, that somehow managed to enrich the material that planet Earth was made from, and all of these materials are now being basically worn by us. By itself, a pretty mind-blowing concept. But obviously this was not the only discovery, and a lot of research has been done since. As a matter of fact, not so long ago, NASA released this absolutely incredible simulation showing us this initial collision, but this time with a kind of a sonification of gravitational waves, allowing us to understand how all of this very likely sounded, and what sort of effects were produced through the gravitational interaction of the collision that happened here. Take a listen. So these unusual oscillations and reverberations, echoing and whistling, is basically a result of two different tones oscillating in frequencies of thousands of hertz. And it's the oscillations produced by the final object that results in the murder, possibly right before the final black hole forms, and very likely when this object becomes some kind of a really massive magnetar. Although the actual answer is still unknown even today. But whatever this object was, it was producing these unusual tonal frequencies which were then heard by the gravitational wave detectors. But ever since that original detection, the scientists just wanted to understand more, and they wanted to answer some other questions. For example, how often do these happen in the Milky Way, and do we know of any potential candidates right here in the Milky Way galaxy, so we can actually study them more? Because as I mentioned, this is believed to be a major factory for a lot of heavier elements detected on planet Earth. And well, how wonderful person, this is Anton, and it looks like the answer to that is yes. The recent identification of an unusual supernova that happened in a star system not so far away from us most likely definitively showed the scientists that this is actually a progenitor for such an event. And so let's discuss this particular study and the discovery in more detail and talk a little bit more about what sort of star systems usually create this. Because they all seem to have a relatively similar origin. And it seems to involve two stars, a binary system. But I guess first a little bit more about this detection. So a few years ago, back in 2016, one of NASA's X-ray observatories detected an unusual explosion from a location with a known BE-type star. These are generally very active, very bright stars, often with a partner and often containing a lot of materials around them, producing very specific emissions. For example, this is Gamma Cassiopeia, one such star. But the analysis of the supernova revealed that it was what's known as ultra-stripped supernova, extremely weak and barely producing any emissions. And it happened at a distance of 11,000 years, yet was barely visible. Moreover, when the scientists observed this afterwards, they realized that the initial star was still there, so it survived the explosion. But because BE stars very often contain a relatively thick envelope around them, it's usually hard to see what's going on here. Nevertheless, the scientists were really curious to find out what's really happening here. Which meant that the scientists had to conduct more follow-ups, more observations, with the scientists really trying to figure out why did this star did not go completely supernova, and more importantly, why did it look like almost nothing here changed. As a matter of fact, the orbital analysis in this case determined that even the orbits of the binary system have not been affected at all. Normally, a supernova explosion will at least dislodge one of the stars, or change their eccentricity, or do something. But the same was not observed in this system. As a matter of fact, the scientists confirmed that in this case, the two stars had a very unusual circular orbit, not even elliptical, and were circling around each other every 60 days, implying a relatively close orbit. But more importantly, they confirmed that one of the stars was larger than the other star, and so because of the overall close distance, and because of the overall large mass, the actual explanation started to make sense a little bit more. In this case, because of the distance, it's quite likely that one of the stars started to steal material from the other star. And it was probably done because that larger star started to expand quite dramatically, and its envelope started to touch the surface of the smaller star. 
This is something that's been observed and studied in a lot of other star systems as well. And so over time that larger star shed quite a lot of hydrogen to its smaller partner, which very likely grew in size from being about 8 solar masses to maybe about 18 solar masses, practically doubling in mass, which is already quite impressive. But it also meant that its larger partner was actually now the smaller partner, and because it was basically approaching the end of its cycle, it was reaching the point where it was about to go supernova, with the resulting explosion being extremely low in energy, not enough to keep the star from its orbit, and not even enough to produce enough light. But in the end, it did end up producing a neutron star in the center. Which is kind of where we find ourselves now. We now have a relatively large and relatively giant star, possibly 18 to 19 solar masses in total, that consumed the mass from its partner, and then we have a neutron star next to it, with an orbit of approximately 60 days. But here's the thing though, because that partner is now also very massive, in the next million years or so it's going to start experiencing pretty much the same. As it starts to expand itself, now the neutron star is going to start stealing its mass back. But instead of depositing the mass like a typical star would, it's most likely going to release all of this as a really huge envelope around the binary, very likely producing a very beautiful nebula. And then within about a million years from now, we're going to have another strip supernova, this time of its partner, with all of this possibly happening within the next 7 million years. With the final product being two neutron stars in pretty much the same position where they were initially, basically creating the progenitor of so many neutron star collisions we've been observing from other galaxies, and at this point they're going to remain this way for a pretty long time, possibly at least 2 billion years. But because of the gravitational waves they're slowly going to make their way closer toward each other, and eventually, after a couple of billion years, will reach the point where they're going to collide, producing even more gold, even more platinum, and a lot of other heavier elements, resulting in what the scientists refer to as the kilonova making this a very unique star system in the Milky Way that basically is going to have three separate supernova events, with all of this ending in some kind of a black hole after a few billion years. But most importantly, finally identifying almost definitive candidate for these very unique and very rare events we've been seeing from other galaxies. And the scientists believe that there are probably about 10 such objects in the Milky Way in total, and so finding one of them almost definitively is actually a pretty big deal. And this is at a distance of 11,000 light years away from us, so statistically it's actually probably the closest to us. And so definitely a super exciting discovery for the scientists studying gravitational waves, neutron star collisions, and the evolution of elements in the entire galaxy. But more importantly, a final answer to that question that was asked approximately 5 to 6 years ago after the initial detection of that neutron star collision. It looks like there are similar stars in the Milky Way after all that are going to be creating similar explosions visible in about 2 billion years from today, and producing these unusual reverberations, echoes and whistling that you heard from that video by NASA. But I'm sure we'll discover even more once the scientists identify more about this particular star system and once we detect or hear something else. Until then, thank you for watching, check out all of the links in the description below, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description, and stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.